Hi and welcome to week 11 here on the Start of Orders League National Hunt where we're uh, going to start over here in Aintree. But before we go there, let's have a quick look back at some of the scores on the doors that we've had. We've not checked out what the top trainers have been doing. So as we have a quick look at the level leaderboard, Joshua's up there at uh, number one position with 53 wins so far this season. Obviously picking up a delightful six last week at Cheltenham. And then he rode with 46. John's there with 35. Darren Thompson with 25. Thunderspark with 23. Jim Murray with 23. Martin lead him up into seventh place with 19. And I know he's very happy about that. David Robertson uh, is in number eight position with 18. And Graham Clusbucks at ninth with 17 wins. And Kevin Meanham coming in at number 10 with 16 wins. So at the top of the board, there's a gap of seven. And we've only got three weeks to go. Can it be closed? Who knows? So uh, good luck to you all there. And now let's get on with uh, what we've got for you this week. Starting off uh, the Grand National Week, which will be tomorrow's big race. Let's see what we've got going on today. So first off, we've got the Liverpool Hurdle. Here at Daintree, which is over three miles, it'll probably be the greatest race since John Barnes took on Paolo Mandini in the 1987 European Championship. Now, the runners we got in this are pretty good. We've got eight of mystery for Joshua, Prime Suspect for Paul Rhodes, Balisiera for Molly at Surfer are all very good horses, as is Fallout Lad. We like a little bit of a Fallout Lad as boss man. But anyway, David Robertson with Fallout Lad looks very good in this. That two wins in its last two races, that would be the one I'd put my pin in. That will move us on to race two, and it's the anniversary four-year-old hurdle. Also here at Dane 3, probably the greatest race course in the world. And it's over two miles and a half a furlong for four-year-olds, so those little nippers can run up and down. And I wish my nippers had shut up. But anyway, in those, we've got some, again, some, got some good horses in this as well. Though I don't know who's going to win it. I'd probably say Heiss for Paul Rhodes. Looks very good. That moves on to race three. Where we got the bet Fred ball. The only ball I've got ain't got Fred in it. And I don't have many bets. But anyway, it's quite a small field. For a three mile one group one chase. Uh, top of the pile is Princess Lady Jane for John Morgan. Princess Lady Jane. Whew. I bet she's all right. Anyway, rated 170, and then you got time to kill by Joshua Sutherland, rated 169. But uh, who knows? Anyone can win that. I like David Robertson's horse. You do, who do? But uh, good luck to you in that. Then we come to the Red Room Handicap Chase. It's also at aim three, possibly the best race course in the world. It's a two-mile Group Three Handicap Chase, and we've got a bit much bigger field in this. And a bit of form, Gilda and Kevin Meenan one last time out. Moon Ferry for Martin Leadham. Moon Ferry, you're trying to tell us something, Martin. Has had some good form, a third and a second of late. But at the top of the pile, you've got to be looking at Ugu Gugu, Warrior Queen, and the mighty Stu Gray. He was also probably the greatest trainer ever been. Uh, both got some form, but mighty Stu Gray's not done very well of late and was pretty rubbish at Cheltenham. Then race five, we got the Crabbies Fox Hunter Chase. Crabbies, the only time I got crabs was stuck in my pants. Uh, it's over two, two miles, five and a half furlongs, and it's a hunter. So that's like people running between two points. Point to point, they call it. Anyway, let's have a quick look here, our kid who's in this one. A uh, man from Afghanistan looks good for Martin Leadham, got a bit of form, but I'm going for Brace for Impact for Graham Clutterbuck. Did you tell you a bit of a joke about Brace for Impact? What's the definition of Australian foreplay? Brace yourself, Sheila. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. Anyway, race six, that's the Manifesto Novices Chase in three. Still the best race course in the world. It's over two miles and a half a furlong. No, it's not. It's over two miles and another half a mile. And it's a great two novice chase. Looking down the field there, chestnut surprise for Paul Rhodes. I'll give him a surprise with a chestnut. Make it nice and hot and put it in his hand. But further down, you got Mumu Vodka. Ooh, I'd like a vodka. I'd like a vodka now. But anyway, some good horses and that. Just not surprised. Top of the pile. Probably win. Then we move on to race seven. The Silver Cross Handicap Hurdle. This is over three miles. And it's a handicap. Which means it's not like the Paralympics or anything like that. It's kind of like they get a mark. And they then get a weight put to that mark. Depending on how many big marks the people have got above you. The horses. Bit confusing. But anyway, let's have a look at the field there. Mm, reasonable field. I think if I really wanted to 
stick me neck out, wreck it Ralph, for Leon Van Rensburg will go well and win, but mark it on your card. Race 8 will be the top novices hurdle here at Aintree, probably the greatest race course in the world. And let's have a look in this field, last time for Derek Hinton. Nicely rated at 161. Last time I got 161 was on a dart boat with three darts. So I think that's best. We'll go for the last stand for Derek Hinton. Race nine, it's the mild May. Mild May? When's it ever been mild in May? Novices Chase. It's also it's over three miles and one furlong, a grade two. But there's some really good horses in it. It's almost more like a grade one. You got Hot Pork rated 170 for Paul. You got Battle at the Hot Gates for Joshua Sullivan, rated 170. And Rambling Rhapsody for John Morgan at 168. How's that a grade two? That's like a grade one plus. Anyway, Leverdotti's in that one, and that's the one I like. Darren Thompson to take it. Mark your card. Number 10, it's the Melon Chase here at Aim 3, probably the greatest race course in the world. Over two and a half miles to Group 1, and I'm not sure who's going to win this. Daz Mayoon did very well last week at Cheltenham, but you've got Joyful Countess in there for John Morgan, and <laughs> Falling Through Clouds for Joshua Sutherland, I don't know who that person was. So if I had to really pick one there, I suppose Daz Mayoon who uh, won at Cheltenham last week. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, find Joyful Countess, I should think, hard to race against. He's only raced twice, but looks like he may well have been left out for this one. Deep Miss of Doug Warren goes in that. Uh, had a winner a few few runs back. Let's hope he could step up and surprise a few people. That will move us on to race 11, which is the Topham Chase. And this is one of one of the races that goes over the Grand National Fences, over two miles, five furlongs, a Group 3 handicap. Lovely big field in there. You could all have a couple in this one. Looking down the field, you had Whip Hand for Martin Leedham, had a bit of better form, a couple of starts back. Um, last winner last time out was Japan Do for Doug Warren. But the rest is all pretty sketchy. So I think that's going to be fairly open, being it's a handicap. Top of the pile is going to be Spaniards in for Darren Thompson, going off 160, and he'll be carrying the 12 stone. Well, that moves on to race 12, which is the last one for the day, which will be the Sefton Novices Hurdle. It's over three, three and a half, three miles and a half a furlong. It's a grade one novice, and it's a real... Poor, well, I shouldn't say poor field. There's some talented runners in there, but only six are going to go to post. And that's eight's the conclusion for Joshua. Little Rockefeller for John Morgan. Villa de la Plata for Paul Rhodes has uh, not had particularly good form of late. Hart has a wish for Molly at Surf, who is always there or thereabouts. The Cone for David Robertson and Ghost Rider for Leon Van Rensburg. If I had to stick my neck out, eight's the conclusion with a last week at Ascot. Uh, Ascot and win last week at Cheltenham. Looking for his third winner in a row, which we know is always quite difficult. So good luck with that. Rated 169 should go well well that was it obviously tomorrow will be the big grand national day guess the tune as usual another sporting theme playing in the background and i'll catch up with you all tomorrow goodbye